Hey, everybody. Hello. Welcome to what Tools Inside. Uh, we are two cooks in the kitchen this morning, and Matt wants to talk to you about cornflakes, apparently. When was the last time you had cornflakes? Do you think cornflakes are just a breakfast cereal? No, there's more. By the way, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask Josh or I, Matt, uh, in the comments. Just go ahead and ask, ask away any questions. We're going to be cooking a few different things today. A bit of a brunch, if you will. What I'm going to do, Matt, is I'm going to, now that they've seen the box of cornflakes, I can unpack it now. So it's yeah, but you can't use that bowl. bowl. I want to use that bowl. Yeah, I'm just going to use a cup. A cup. Uh, one of our That's top all you need for your That's recipe. Fine. I guess so. Um, we have leftover stuff that we're going to use for uh, a brunch the next day. We're going to show you how to put some of that together. Easy to stuff, easy to do. And yet you can have a fancy looking... This is why I never like cornflakes. A fancy looking breakfast. Okay, like a brunch idea. We're going to have some eggs. We're going to have some bacon. We're going to have some scallops. We're going to have... A little uh, potato souffle. Um, we're gonna flambe the the scallops. And we're gonna do all of that uh, right here, right now during this live. Okay, so all these mistakes like you're seeing with uh, with cornflakes being live. dumped, it's all live. This is all just nothing of this is put on for you guys. So if you guys have questions, like, did you wash your hands before you touched those cornflakes? Yeah, that's my put first question. The, uh, did you? The, yes, of course. Okay, good. I always wash my hands. What before. am I gonna do with three cornflakes? That's all you need. You don't need more than that. I, well, we're, we're going to get right into it, okay? <clears throat> now you have um, four. The first thing we're going to do is start... Josh is going to prepare the bacon, because bacon takes a little while to cook. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cool. Well, so yeah, while, while he's bait. doing that, I am going to mix up... Let's see which one of these I want to use. Which happens to be our first product that we're, we're going to talk about. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Have a look at these guys. This is a, a beautiful This is from uh, wooden 13 spoon. Chefs. Yeah. Okay. This is the, uh, it's not just a wooden spoon. It's an olive wood sp uh, spoon. Yeah. And they come, they have a whole bunch of different types, right? They've got this one here. Oh, somehow I, okay. Let me show you guys. So dude, let's just stay there for a minute. I'm going to show you guys all the different ones that we have that, that come with it. Beautiful. Like the, the green, it's just a really nice tools to work with. Here's another one. Show you that one. Right. right, this is like the uh, the straining spatula. Look at these things. These are absolutely well, beautifully crafted. Like they fit really nicely in your hand. This wood. Uh, this... Wait, right here. Is this what you want to do? There you go. I thought you could see it. There you go. So this is uh, this is olive wood, right? So this is uh, from an olive tree, which only grows in a, in a in a certain area in the world, and so. Because of the kind of wood that it is, you need to treat this wood on a monthly basis. So what you do is you take your wooden spoon. I gotta, I gotta wash my hands. I still got bacon grease on them, but or bacon. Yeah, I, I, I got a paper bacon. towel for you. Would you like that? Well, no, I gotta wash it. It's bacon. Okay, go ahead. Um, but anyways, you take your spoon and mineral oil, and you lather it, literally lather it in in mineral oil until it's all wet, and then you let it sit, and it'll soak in that mineral oil, and then you'll and have a nice spoon it. that lasts a very long time. I got a little paper towel for you there in a second. So uh, while he's washing his hands from bacon grease, um, I've, got bacon some, grease. I've got some leftover uh, potatoes here. This is just mashed potatoes, right? Just, a, just mashed potatoes from yesterday. And I, I'm going to actually make it into a bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a souffle here this morning. So we're going to mix that up. I'm going to put some, uh, this is whipped cream cheese. I'm going to put a little whipped cream cheese in there. You can put regular whipped cream cheese in there if you want. But I'm going to do this because it's easier to mix. So you just put a few, a uh, couple tablespoons of that in there, a couple dollops or whatever you want to call, and you're going to mix that around. That's going to give it a nice consistency, All right? Stretch it a bit. Along with that, you're going to throw in some seasoning a bit, Josh. Oh, okay. Um, what kind of seasoning? Like the old pepper and salt, the old yeah, standard? The, yeah, the old standard. Oh, just... Let me know what you want there. Are you cooking up the bacon? Yeah, it's cooking up. I'm going to cook it up half because it's all I got room for. No, no, you can cook it all up, can't you? Well, you know, cook whatever you want. I'm going to cook up half because it, it, it fast. Then the other half should be right in the fridge. Yeah. Let me do that before Matt gets all angry. This is a really nice uh, spoon, actually. It works really well. Yeah, well, what I like about it is it's decoration. And uh, you saw a close up. Let me show you another one. Oh, Matt's mixing this up. Look at the, uh, look at the decoration in that wood. That really is unique, and every piece that you get is going to be like unique. A, it's like a piece of art, each one. Right? Here's another another decoration. So here's what you get. 
Here's your flat spatula. Okay, I'm gonna keep it in a close up. Here's your flat. Here's your angled spatula. You get an, another angled spatula, but with holes in it. So if you don't want to stir, you know, if you don't want to do too much uh, mixing. Here's a neat. Here's a neat thing. This is a spoon with a corner. So if you're stirring and you can get all the corners of, in the pot. Uh, or like your uh, the corner of the pot or the corner of like those square baking dishes. That kind and of Matt thing. is using just regular. Just a regular wood spoon. Now in with this mix, this little melange of uh, I'm making here, I'm also going to put some some cheese. Just some shredded cheese. It could be like, you could put um, um, cheddar or, yeah, you, know, you can start, kind of see what that's starting to look like there. All right, just like a mix like that is what I'm putting together. Yeah. Okay. Now, guys who are just, who are just joining, we're making a, a, a nice little dish, but we're featuring some products today. Um, one, uh, the, the first one we talked about is from uh, 13 Chefs. This is Matt, by the way, and I'm Josh. We are What Tools Inside. If you haven't already, make sure you're following us because we always have something great to show you. Yep. Today, Matt's cooking up some souffle and uh, some brunch style options. And uh, we're talking about some products that we're using in the process. Right. So what I've done was I've, I've mixed in some, uh, some whipped cream cheese in with some mashed potatoes or left over. I've got some cheese, some shredded cheese I've put in there. And now I'm going to prepare my little ramekin dishes. These are, uh, you can get these, they're, they're inexpensive. Uh, they should be in the carousel there. And you, you, you put the, the, the souffle mixture in it and you actually put this whole uh, dish right into the oven. And that's what bakes. Yeah. Right, so, so they can handle the high heat. So before you do that though, this is, this is a critical part that you will only learn the hard way if you don't listen to me. You need to prepare the dish. Now, if you have like a little cooking spray, you could use that if you wanted to. Um, what I just do is I just use a little butter. The butter makes everything better. Yeah. Right, Josh? Butter makes everything better, that's for sure. And I just I just take the butter and I smear it around the uh, inside of the dish. I make sure I cover every inch of it because you wouldn't think the potatoes would get stuck, but evidently they do. Yeah, they'll get stuck on there. They'll make it'll get very hard to uh, very very hard to take out. And the butter always uh, it makes it, it'll taste real beautiful. Yeah, you got to make sure you get all like the cockroach dirt and stuff out of your dishes before you. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Right? That's kind of like a. So man, what, how did you feel about holding this? Was it a nice spoon? Was it sturdy? Did you feel like it was going to break? Because potatoes. It's a very nice spoon. Uh, it feels good. It's like having a, a qual any kind of quality tool. When you have something cheap in your hand, you know it's cheap. Yeah. It'll do the trick. You're worried maybe it's going to snap on you any minute. But this, these were not. These are not like that. So we, we talked about the uh, the uh, the 13 Chef Store uh, olive uh, wood spatula set. But there's another spatula set that we're going to feature today as well. Um, why don't we see a picture of these? So this is from M Kitchen World. These spatulas are designed... To, uh, res heat resistant, right? So they're they're the uh, nice bright orange and and very tough material. And so I'm going to show you the different the different kinds of spatulas that they give you. Because everybody has this one at home, right? They have these that, and I dropped it on the floor. <laughs> uh, but how do you have these guys? Right? This is like a perfect butterer, it seems. And this is uh, you know or the a stirrer, and here's another nice little, a nice little mini one. You yeah. know, they're all dishwasher safe. All this, dish, all dishwasher safe, <laughs> and me. resist heat up to 480 <coughs> degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's incredible. So you don't have to worry about it. I use those all the time when I'm making omelets, because they they, they form to the pans. So you can get it in, in and around the, the the pan. So here, look. So I got no worries now that I'm going to be using this in the bacon grease. Are you? Are you showed off the the splash guard Not yet? yet? No, we're going to see that. That's a product coming up. Are you? Okay. Oh, okay. Here. That's, That's absolutely. This is exactly what it whenever is. Whenever you see bacon and guys make it, you know that they're happy. Bacon, cheese, potatoes. So generally, I would use little tongs, but I want to show you that you don't have to worry about these ever melting. If you have, if you are cooking something over 480 degrees, you're a scientist and you're in the lab. Because yeah, you're not doing that should, at home. You shouldn't be. Yeah. So what I'm showing you guys here, this is um, this is what I'm making you guys right now. This is what's going to make the, all the difference in your little souffle thing, okay? It's the cornflakes on the top. You put the cornflakes on top and you push them in a little bit. Push them down. Push them down. Don't worry about making a bit of a mess. You can clean that up after. 
okay? Now, let me ask you, would it have been better to squish them and then put them on? I like what you did, though, actually. Yeah. Because it kind of pushes them down into the potatoes. That's right. And what's, what's really nice about this now is I put a little layer of cheese on top of the potatoes. Who doesn't love cheese, right? Lactose intolerant people, probably. Probably not. Um, now, here's, a rhetorical question. here's what you want to do. Uh, the fastest way for me to do this is going to be to just take a, a knife and put it on. And I have an idea. What's that? I, I want you to make another big one in that big blue bowl. Yeah, I will. You have enough. Yeah, sure. You need to take a generous amount of butter and put it right on the top, right on the very tippity top, okay? And as that bakes, that's going to that's gonna drip down. Not a crazy amount, like just like a slice of butter, right? Um, who, who was it that said this is comfort food, Mark? Who was it? Who was it? Catherine? And this it like, couldn't be more uh, accurate. Like so there's your. So here's what here's what it looks like. No, no, here, here's what it looks like. Let me put this in the camera for you guys. Okay, there's your there's your um, your little souffle. It's got the butter on the top. So as that heats up, that's going to melt down over top of those cornflakes, and it's going to get a nice, beautiful crunch, and it's going to just grease everything up. Oh, it's going to be nice. Now. This is going to go into our little oven. So we've got a little uh, toaster oven here. This is the Black & Decker oven. You want a little fantastic. pan down this or something? You want this guy in there? No, no. No, this is fine. This is fine. Oh, oh, yeah. No, this is fine. You just put those in there right like that, and I'll have room for my other one on the side. All right. Well, because, I mean, those are really nice personal style uh, ram ramekins. And, uh, but if you're doing a family style, you don't need to be that fancy, right? Yeah, you, you can put it, you can make it like a bake, right? You can put it in like a, a casserole dish or something like that. Put it in there. We just have a bowl. We'll put this in there. Hopefully, this bowl can handle the heat, eh, Josh? Yeah. Mark, let's look at the, let's look at this splash guard. You want to go up the splash guard so that while the bacon's still sizzling? Yeah, right there. Splatter guard. So the next part that I want to show you is what I've been using to protect our faces and clothes, and that is the splatter guard. Yes. Very okay. critical when you're baking. This is or from, when you're cooking with oil. This is from Birchcock, and uh, they. It's, it, may, it fits a really big pan. It goes from small pans to big pans. Look at how happy this chef is in this. Look, at, you can be like him or like Matt and uh, and just be happy cooking, knowing that you're not splashing everywhere. Absolutely. You know what I was thinking this would also be good for, man? Not just grease, um, but like a spaghetti sauce. Yeah, any kind of a, anything that anything would normally... See, you hear end. that thing that just went... Psh, the, the bacon just kind of burst. That grease all got caught in here. But look at the framework, how it comes across. The whole thing, so it's not it's not flimsy. It's got a lot of strength. So you can pick it up, do what you have to do, put it back down, like Josh is showing you there. Now let me just. But uh, when you're flipping bacon too, you can keep it like this because I often uh, at home cook in my underwear. That's a little bit more information than most of the audience would probably well, want no, to know. No, it's Sunday morning. It's late. No, no, never do that. And uh, now I can do it in comfort, knowing that my legs aren't going to get. Oh, burned. oh, you live alone. No. Nope. With my family. So your whole family has to watch you cook in the... Well, yeah. In the nude. That's right. Not in the nude. But without a shirt on, for sure. Just make sure that you have that uh, splash guard then. Or else you will burn. So you can see this. You can use this on anything. Like we're talking about the big... You have a big pot that's almost boiling over with the spaghetti sauce. You, it's going to splash all over your uh, oven. and everything. Put this on there. You don't have that issue anymore. Gosh, I need more cornflakes. Really clean. And look at the reviews. 21,000 people reviewed this and gave it a four and a half star. Making a big one here, but you see what I forgot to do? You butter, you didn't stuck there. I didn't butter the dish. Yeah. So now what's going to happen is that half of those potatoes are going to stick to the dish, and you're going to spend 20 minutes cleaning so that. It'll be nice and crusty. That'll be your responsibility when the show's over. It was your job to keep those. Put now, these over here. This is cooking up here nice. Now again, you got to put your little butter on the top because that's that's very important. It's a critical part of this process. Now, uh, this bacon should have been cooked and put in that. No. Display. I think that the bacon is being used for something else. Uh, you could have used it for both. Nope. All right, so here you go. This is uh, I got my butter on here now. That should just do it nice. Oh. Number one best seller, this splatter guard. Butter. Right, moving on. Matt, how what what's it, what else are we gonna do here? How, how crispy do you want this bacon, by the way? Nice, cooking up nice in there, guys. Uh, bacon crispy. That's good. That looks well. No, crispier than that. Why not? Well, you I mean, know some what? Of the, some of this is real crispy. That's not too bad. So like, I'm going to take some of it out for you. Get some of this cleaned up a bit here so we can go on to our next piece. So our soufflés are in the oven. We've made, uh, we took some mashed potatoes, some cheese, some cream cheese, um, and, and some corn flakes, a little bit of butter, and we put it into the oven. I know Matt's going to be mad at me for taking some of the grease off the bacon, but... No. It's all right, Josh. You can, have, you can take your grease. All right. 
Well, we're going to be at. Oh, yeah, you definitely want to get that out of there. It's burning now. You're burning it now. What's wrong with you? You said you wanted it crispy. I don't want it burnt, though. Perfect. Okay. Where are you going to put that? I am gonna. I got a spot for it right here. Put it in the pan. All right. So now this bacon is nice and crispy. Nice and burnt. Nice and burnt. I think everybody likes it. Let's see it. I don't have any place to put this thing here. Now I've kept the I've kept the pan. Here's your close up of the bacon here. Look at this, nice, crispy. And I'm not worried that my spatula is melting. Beautiful. Right. So here, uh, you need to cook your scallops. On it. So for, first of all, take the scallops out. Put your bacon up here in front, so we can uh, we can work on this here. Let me turn this on. I'll turn the temperature down a bit, I think. Yeah, turn your temperature down on that one. We'll put this back here. This on here. You have some butter or something that you want for the... Uh... Now, what are we doing with the scallops, man? What's your plan here? This is Matt's master dish here. Scallops. You have to take... There's a little tiny nib on those scallops. You need to take that off. It's like a little muscle. Is it sharp? Or will I poke no, myself? It's, no, it's just a little muscle. You need to remove that muscle. And then we're going to uh, uh, cook the... I want you to flambe the... Uh, these, these a little bit for us, okay? okay. Get a real nice oh, yeah. flavor. All right. And then that—that's kind of the reason why we're talking uh, fire and ice. But to, in order to keep that nice and cool, when you when you especially when you bring your seafood home from the from the grocery store yes. or whatever, you need to keep it cold. You don't just throw it in the grocery bag. Always keep your seafood especially very cold. So you get those. Uh, my wife has a big one that she when she goes grocery shopping, she has a uh, it's a zipper bag. Yeah, and a she always bag. puts ice in it. Right. So for that trip, because it's a little bit of a, of a further trip, right? But instead of ice, you could use something like this. Right. This is the uh, this is from the Cooler Shop. Okay. Uh, this is actually really neat because you're not you're buying something that you're able to do yourself. Something's mm. off back there. Oh yeah, because uh, yeah, it's um. Why don't you uh, why don't you demonstrate? Why don't you cut up these scallops, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'll demonstrate All this. Right. Good idea. You're scared of the All scallops. Right. Now, yeah, they're too, I get intimidated with all that muscle. Now, this is a, this is called this is from Cooler Shop, right? And uh, what you do with this is they give you detailed instructions. Listen to this. So there's some there's some uh, material in there that you create your own cooler pack. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Well, is it on the, on these scallops? On all scallops, there's a little muscle section that was attached to the the shell or whatever it was that little tiny muscle thing that's what you want to just kind of cut off because it just it's just a little too chewy you cut that part off just a little fyi there you go all right so it's very simple uh they give you the exact instructions of how much water to put in here and uh that, that's what you knock at the back what's that the instructions no the the uh the filter Oh, or the, 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 what do you call it? The, uh, I can get it. No, that's all right. I'll just make this work. Okay. So I'm just going to put this in here. And now what all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the first cup in, of water in, uh, uh, first, right? And then, because they tell you what to do here. They tell you, put your water in. I'm just going to eyeball it. Working from the left side here. This is kind of, the right side is kind of tricky. Okay. So you put your cup of water in and then they tell you to put your cap back on and mix it. You mix up that that stuff that's in it. It's a it's a it's like a gravel. It's like a grit, right? And then you take this and you put the rest of the water in it. Once that's done, so I'm just melting down some butter. So you can clearly see, and I'm going to throw my my scallops in there, just like that. Now these will not take long to cook. A few minutes. Uh, on each side. Scallops is one of those things that you got to kind of get it right. Now, I'm filling this up with water here. Spend but more time in the water. Just on here to keep that from splashing. Now, the trick with this is you don't want to overfill it. You don't want to overfill this because then it'll expand. The whole point of this is to keep it thin. Right? So you squeeze it until the water starts to break to the top there. 
And then you put your cap on. It's like that. Okay. Oh, it sounded like you had to really There you go. Yeah, you want, you want to give it a good squeeze. Right. Okay. Hold on. And there you go. Now you got a nice handle. You put this in the fridge. And in... Uh, and it's... Remember, the first time it takes a little longer to freeze because you got that chemical reaction happening. In fact, the science behind this is uh, is called... Is a special science that's, that makes these last longer than regular water. I don't want to read that. I want to make that sure. It's called... Um, there it is. Phase change. Okay, it's a science called phase change uh, that that lets you hold large amounts of cooling energy at a much lower temperature than ice. So this is like 14 degrees cooler than ice. So it lasts longer and takes up less space. Feel the heat though, man, on this. I gotta see which way to turn it Chemical around. change. The chemical change, and right? So then. Oh can, yeah, you can feel it getting hot there. Right now, that's that. That's that first chemical change, and then you put that in the. Uh, you, you wait twenty minutes or so, then you put that in the cooler. It doesn't take up hardly any room, and uh, I mean, it, and that equals five pounds, five to seven pounds of ice. Right, so you get a you get a five to seven pound bag of ice at the at your local store. You know, that's a big bag of ice, right? Right. Well, now this is giving you the same cooling power. On a tray. And it sits flat, right? It lays yeah, flat. It. it just lays down on the floor and takes up no room. And you don't have a chemical cesspool at the bottom of your when I mean, all that nasty yeah. stuff because of the melted ice, you know? Exactly. Matt, do you want to flamboy that? Flamboy that? Yeah, can you do that now? Yeah. That's what I was waiting on you for you to do. All right. Here's some uh, little wild turkey you could use. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Now I'm going to switch this over. So I've had these two plays into the, in this oven for probably 10 minutes or so. So, and it's all already been cooked. Everything's already been cooked. So you're basically just heating it up, right? There you go. Flambe those nice. Get that little bourbon flavor into the scallops. And now that they've been in there cooking for about 10 minutes, I'm going to broil the top because I want that top to be nice and crunchy. So I'm going to change this over to broil. These are done now, I, 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 I assume. There you go, that switched over to broil. What's that? Yeah, I would leave them in just a couple minutes longer. Okay. I just want to make sure that they're... Now, you can actually put all that bacon into this, into these juices. It'll rehydrate them, so cooked. <laughs> Heavenly days. You wanted bacon crumbs, you said. Yeah, bacon bits. Bacon bits. There you go. All right, now that's going to be a really nice bourbon-flavored um little scallops and look scallops, at that that's what you scallops that's what you got there you see that have a look here here man stir, give it a stir here okay so those are cooking up nice in there that'll be absolutely here. delicious now there was one more product that i wanted to bring attention to with that ice along with that ice pack okay uh, uh and and it's it's made by the same company but it's not the hard shell. It's it's the it's the soft it's the soft boy, soft shell. Soft shell. Soft shell. Right. So the difference with this is uh, they're the flexible, and you have a cork that you plug in. Same same process. Fill it with water, shake it, then uh, put the cork in and really crank down the lid, and then you wait 20 minutes and that gel forms. Right. Then you put it in the fridge. It keeps your stuff colder longer. And it works really good. Now, I did one earlier this morning. Let's see if it's frozen. So I'm just going to cook up some eggs to go with our breakfast as well. So it's not quite frozen 100% yet, but that's what it looks like. I mean, that's that's nice and flat, and it replaces up to three pounds of ice and just, just sits there in the bottom of your cooler and keeps everything colder yeah. for a lot longer. That's really good. Really good. So I like to, just some personal tips on when I cook something, what I like to do. I like to really heavily pepper my eggs. It's off the heat now? Yeah, that's, that's good. You can turn it right off. I like to heavily pepper my eggs because it just adds so much flavor. It just pulls the flavor right out. A little bit of salt. You already got a lot of salt in food, generally. And uh, now those will cook up. We're going to show you what we're going to make with this in just 
moment or two. Again, I like to use this kind of a spatula, these silicone spatulas for when I'm uh, cooking because I can, like when I'm cooking frying eggs and stuff like that, because you can kind of get into the form of the side of the pan. You know, the spatula, it's kind of, a, it's flat and hard to get, get in unless you have a big open pan, right? So especially for omelets, they work really good. So this one here will You know, I was thinking up. you could take all of these things, all these ingredients that we had today and, and cook them uh, at a friend's house or somewhere else. You go to someone's house for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, put it in the, put those, throw those ice coolers packs in there like they're in the picture here. 11,000 ratings. Uh, put them in the... Put that in there, would you? On there? Uh, you want yeah. it on the plate? Yeah, put that on the plate. I need that pan. And back up. Up a little. Got a little another little trick we're going to show everybody. All right. For display purposes. Those are. Okay, these are done. You take those out. Do you have an oven mitt? Perfect. Uh, cool. I got no oven mitt. You want me to rinse this? You said? No, no. Just leave it there. Well, just give it a wipe with the um, with the paper towel because I don't want to cool it. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is a little fried cheese as a base, um, cause that really looks really cool. Tastes really good. You got that turned up? Just give that a white oh, yeah. A spatula here. You leave a little bit of that grease in there, that'll give it a nice flavor as well. Yeah. You don't watch our show for healthy eating, necessarily. Yeah, sometimes we do a little sometimes. healthy one, but once in a while, this is a, this is a brunch, this is a once in a, a, a blue, blue moon. moon. And you know what we forgot, man, it's nice orange juice and champagne. Yeah, well, you need that every brunch you have. You can't have it all the time. Now, in here, is that, is that heating up good? You got yeah. turned up? Okay. Just take your uh, shredded cheese. This is really simple to do, and it looks awesome. Take your shredded cheese and just a single layer on the bottom. If you have a good nonstick pan. <laughs> yeah, it makes it really easy. <coughs> I had some bacon there, and it went down the wrong. Okay, so you just make a little layer like that, and then you just let it do its thing. It will cook. Yeah. All right, so just do a layer of cheese like that on the bottom, and then let it cook. If your, if your pan's hot, it shouldn't take long at all. And you literally want to just melt that cheese down and sizzle it even past that. You're going to crisp it. You're yep. going to make it down nice and nice and crispy. These things away because I don't need this anymore. Our eggs are cooking up nice. See those? There you go. Now you're gonna flip that whole thing. Well, I uh, is, you like yours uh, flipped? I'll flip it. I'll yeah, I don't like this. I don't like sunny side up. That's for sure. Right. Can. There you are. You can't learn that at chef school. No. No, nah, maybe you could. Maybe that's what they teach you. I don't. That's even probably know. what they teach you. So, we flip our eggs. Now we're, our our eggs will be ready to go here in just a minute. We're gonna cook this down. All right. So we're gonna do that like that. And just kind of keep it all all together, and it's gonna it's gonna cook down. Now let's show you guys how these things turned out. Let's get you got one a paper towel here. Here, I'm gonna put it right on this cutting board, all right? Okay. So that you, they can see it, and you're not having to hold it. Right. Another one here. Yep. Two. Yo! Hot. It is hot. There you go. Once that cools a little bit, we'll show it. We'll show you close up on the camera, unless you can hold the ramekin with the. Yeah, I probably could hold it. So they get to see what that is then. So what you're trying, what you want to do here? Get ready with your close up. All right, that's your cornflakes, nice and crispy. And that butter, look at that butter drizzling off. That's yeah, beautiful that baked looking. in really nice and didn't take long to do. Those eggs, I think, are done. Yeah, well. definitely. Let's get a plate out here. But let me show you how we how I would do this, okay? Is it? Oh, wait, not yet. Yeah, my, 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 my. Okay, we'll put them all on there. We got another plate, right? Yeah. Put them all on there. Now, this is cooked a little too long. I personally would like my eggs to have a little more runniness, runniness to, them. to them, but we'll put it like that. We'll just turn this off. Okay. All right, now, all right. how we're gonna end up plating this is, is really the key. So we gotta keep this. This is turned all the way up? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, so it's almost ready. Uh, because this is kind of the base of what your, of what your, uh, your whole plate's gonna look like, right? This goes on here on one side. Right. 
This is all hot. I don't want to touch anything. I'm going to burn it. Can't be that hot. You pick it up. Yeah, he's, he's oh, literally oh, crying oh. in his eyes oh. right now. Heavenly days. I got another one here, too. You want another one on there? Oh, you can do that one. There you go. Nice. Okay, so this is now really starting. You can see it's changing color. It's getting a lot more, looking down a lot more. See? That's important. Now you can almost start rolling that. Yeah, which we're not going to roll. Oh. We're going to click that like that. Let it give it another second or two. And then we'll separate it. My goodness, that will be good. So we got our, uh, th this potato souffle we made was just mashed potatoes, cream cheese, uh, cheddar cheese mixed in there. Uh, then we put uh, put into a ramkin, put a, a layer of little a little layer of cheese on top of that. Then cornflakes, a little butter on top, baked it, then broiled it. So you have that. Now the tools we use for these, like Matt's using right now, is the uh, is the M Kitchen World's uh, uh, heat resistant um, spatulas, right? Up to 480 degrees Fahrenheit, non-sticking. Uh, you can do it for very hot items or cold items. You want to use this for uh, okay. making. Uh, I need a um, cutting board, but you took it. Took it off. Can we can we clear that so you have a cutting board again? There you, go. you just need the one. This goes down here, flat, and I need to cut that in half. You mm -hmm. can do that for me. That would be fantastic. Watch out. So I just had a. Uh, I just put a little kind of a uh, like a what's the word we could use for that? I don't. Know. I don't know where you're going with that. Oh, yeah. All right, what else did we use? Mark, let's see what's the other products that we used. We had, uh, we used the olive wood. Well, Matt's plating this here. We used the olive wood spoons uh, for, for the souffle. Uh, really beautiful looking spoons. Each one is unique. Uh, 514 ratings, four and a half stars. It looks beautiful. And, it, and it's a showpiece for your home that you would definitely want to try. I have it home. Right. Um, here's another one here. I'm going to plate this one too. Hang on, Josh. I'm not finished. Don't go messing with it. And then we used. Uh, then we talked about uh, some, uh, the, the 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 splash guard. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll talk about this. The coolers. We showed you how to use your own, make your own cooler, right? They come in a four pack, and you fill it up, and you do what you got to do, and then you just throw it in the fridge. When you're done with it, wipe it down, put it back in the freezer. You don't have any messes. Uh, no no water. No melted pool at the bottom of your cooler. Nothing. It's beautiful. It's clean. And eleven thousand people agree with me. What's next? Then we had the ice pads, actually. Uh, the ice pads were those big guys here. This is great because this you just throw right at the bottom of your cooler, right? It just sits on the bottom, and then all your stuff goes on top of it. It didn't take up hardly any room, and it replaced three pounds of ice. Um, uh, 1,800 reviews, four stars uh, from Cooler Shock. I don't know if I can tilt that a bit more, but... Let's see what that looks like. Let's take a close up here, Mark. Of uh, there you are, a little bit closer, man. So there you have your uh, your your potato souffle with your eggs and uh, and uh, bacon, bourbon, scallops, scallops with uh, with uh, baked with grilled cheese. Absolutely delicious. This just takes a second to put on. Put your egg, and that's how you plate it. Remember, plating it is half the battle. Make it look nice. Yeah. Take the time to do Couple your best. Scallops. You can change it up a little bit if you want. Do it a little differently. For it that way. Remember, not all food is going to be healthy, but your all food is going to be delicious. Well, that's, is, that your, is that like a coin? You're something you're coining? I just, just know. All food is delicious, no matter what he says. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today, guys. I think we showed them everything we wanted to show not them. Not everybody right? can be a chef, but everybody. No, what is it? Not everybody can be a chef, but everybody can eat. A good chef can come from anybody. Guys, thanks for joining us. See you next time. Yeah. And if you need any help from us, just text us. Text you? Give them their personal number? Nice.